Uh, good evening once again. I'm Sumaya Nalukwago from Uganda. I'm an IT professional. I'm a tech community lead. I volunteer with Google Developer Groups. I'm a local organizer and women tech makers. I as well as train with the Innovation Village. I'm excited to be speaking to you about how you can build an inclusive open source system. So we are going to look at how uh, we are going to understand the unconscious bias that is in the community, in the ecosystem. We are going to look at how we can promote diversity and respectful collaboration because I believe open source is about collaboration. We are going to look at the power of mentorship programs in team and team. We are going to look at accessibility and participation tools. Uh, we are going to look at how you can build a rewarding open source career. So first, we need to understand the unconscious bias, the bias in the community, the bias that maybe uh, I cannot join open source, I cannot contribute to open source because, because of the different stereotypes in the society, because maybe I come from a, a less privileged community or I don't have technical expertise, so we need to understand the bias. So this, this bias can be on different levels, in different communities, in different areas, and it can, uh, it can come up in different characteristics, like uh, someone can overlook your contribution, they just ignore it, they think maybe it's not good enough, that, that alone is bias. Uh, they can have a bad behavior, they can think um, maybe you're, they can think that you're overlooking their contributions. They are treating you badly. That alone is bias. Then now, how can we overcome it? We just have to first recognize it. Then we can deal with it. So we cannot overcome it without understanding it. So once you realize that there is some bias in your community, in your team, then try as much as you can to overcome it by resolving it. Because you cannot have a successful open source career without overcoming the bias. So how do we now promote diversity, inclusion, and collaboration? First is celebrate diverse ideas. We all come from different backgrounds. Our contributors may have different levels of skill sets. Some may be beginners, experts, intermediates. So you need to celebrate whatever they bring on board. If they have contributed something, celebrate it. Uh, if they have contributed something big, celebrate it. Celebrate their approaches, celebrate their skill sets because they are trying to learn and they definitely want to get better. Then as you're working on, in your teams, actively um, listen to whatever someone is speaking about. Because by you listening to someone, it will make them feel involved, it will make them feel like they are important and you would also definitely want to be listened to. So you need to listen to people and you need open communication. Uh, accept feedback and always ask for feedback. Then in your communities, in your different uh, projects that you're working on, uh, make sure that you have a culture of mentorship. You can always assign beginners to experts so that they can learn how to contribute. Um, you can encourage your people to always share their knowledge. If they have learned something, tell them to share it. Maybe they can write a blog on Medium. They can do a YouTube video. They can do anything as long as they are sharing their knowledge. Then have contribution guidelines. Maybe uh, I really don't know the different background guidelines, but you can set guidelines and be like, um, uh, you have to, our contribution guidelines, uh, we accept contributions from this and these categories of people. We accept, like, have guidelines that rule the community so that people can know where to stop and where to go. So mentorship does a really good role in uh, open source because I feel like mentorship is you having someone to guide you through the way. And 
different mentorship programs connect experienced contributors, the experts, to the beginners. So if I'm a beginner and I join a community, I join a project and I'm attached to a mentor, trust me, it will make my life easy because a mentor will help me, will guide me when I'm wrong. They will tell me what to do, and I will definitely easily learn from them. So we need to have mentorship programs in our different projects. Then these mentorship programs also provide guidance. I talked about this, the support, the encouragement. If you're coming from an underrepresented group, and maybe you assigned a mentor, it will definitely make your life easy because, trust me, a mentor will, will actually identify your challenges, and they will tell you how to solve them. They will guide you on each and everything that you're doing. And uh, mentorship programs also help in building confidence and developing technical skills. But I believe confidence is also one of the soft skills from my, my previous presentation. So once you now have the technical skills from a mentor and you add on the soft skills, trust me, you will be a good open source contributor. Then mentorship programs, if a, if a project, if an open source community has a mentorship program, it will uh, give the community members a sense of belonging. If I stand here and know that I belong to this and this community in the Apache system, and this is the kind of mentorship I'm taking on, I feel like I have a, com uh, a group of people I belong to. So mentorship programs really play a vital role in the tech ecosystem. So how do we make open source accessible? Yes, we've made it inclusive. We've made our uh, projects inclusive. How do we make them accessible. So first is try as much as you can to leverage on the communication tools. If you're going to have um, a collaboration meeting, uh, which platforms are you going to use? Try as much as you can. If you're using online platforms, use platforms that support transcribing. Uh, use platforms that uh, support recording for for further use. Maybe uh, a community member wants to refer to what the talk was about, uh, so that you can make it accessible for everyone. Then also try as much as you can to always provide documentation and resources in multiple languages. I might say that this event is doing it well because we are able to transcribe and and get the whatever they are talking about in different languages. Then also offer flexible contributions options like code reviews and bug reporting. Uh, you shouldn't limit your contributions to one thing. You can let members contribute in every other way they can. And trust me, you will have supported them and you will have made contribution accessible. Then try as much as you can to promote your community events, your project events in different locations. And not only having an, one event in one location, you can choose to have local meetups and the meetup should have virtual options so that people can join from different locations. Thank you so much. Any questions? Yes, yes, yes. As you know, there are a lot of uh, developers in China, also the, a lot of junior developers. And for most Junior developer in China, they are lack of English speaking and writing, and they are no enough confidence to uh, to do a lot of communication. So, is there a better way to encourage them to give them more confidence to do more communication? Yes, thank you so much for your question. Uh, you can encourage them to to learn first, because I believe every journey starts with learning. You, you learn how to communicate with your peers. And through that, you will actually realize that by you communicating to your peers, you can easily communicate to other people, because it starts with the people around you. If you start speaking English to the people around you, then once you learn from them, you'll definitely start speaking it with other people. So they just have to start by learning. And after you've learned, then you can practice with the people that speak it around you, the people you, you can be confident around without fearing anything. Then through that, you can speak with other people. I hope yeah. that answers you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question actually for you that how's the uh, open source communities and development in Africa or in Uganda? Can you describe how, what's happened there? I'm just curious. Okay, we have uh, different open source communities in Uganda. We have Open Source Africa, Oscar. Open Source Africa. Uh, that is uh, 
open source Africa in you uh, we have like a general one then it has local chapters because we have one in Uganda there are some in Nigeria they always have an open source summit in Nigeria but they didn't hold one this year then we also have chaos but we don't have a, a, a local chapter in Uganda chaos. yes chaos so I, I think most of the chapters are in the western part of Africa and uh, these communities always have local meetups uh, they contribute uh, the Oscar community that I'm in, they make public contributions. Yeah, yeah and um, they have, uh, they try as much as they can to train members how to contribute to open source. Every other single time, they're always encouraging members to contribute to projects, to work on projects together. And uh, the community is really trying to grow compared to how it was previously. Yeah. Okay, thank you. the tools for the community for communication or how you resolve the conflicts or maybe communication gaps like you are doing this like uh, uh, under the table or like make it public that's my question oh, okay okay so for the tools how we leverage for the tools uh, I say I'm a community lead, so I try as much as I can to get feedback from every community member before we can make a decision um, if you're going to have an event I will ask how many are able to attend physically and how many are able to attend virtually. Uh, if they are going to attend virtually, I, which platform do they prefer? Do they prefer Zoom? Do they prefer Google Meet? Do they prefer YouTube Live? So once you get that feedback from the community, uh, we normally use polls or Google Forms for them to, to tell us what tools they are, they are comfortable with. Once you know the tools that your community members are comfortable with, then you definitely use them for the community events. Then for the, for the conflicts, once you identify a conflict, you listen to both sides of the community members. Then, of course, it's always under the table before you bring it to the community because I believe some conflicts don't need to come to the public. They can be solved privately. You listen to what both members have to say and then try as much as you can to resolve it maturely without hurting anyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? More question? Actually, it's my get more question. No. Oh, okay. How, what, what do you think AI or GPT can help to build the community? Sorry? Uh, what do you think about AI would it, or GPT? GPT uh, will it help to build the community? What do I think AI? Yes, generally, can do GPT, what? AI. What? AI and GPT. AI and, and GPT. In the community. Uh, to build the community. Okay, uh, how do I the, use it? Uh, to never the tools. AI is the tools, too. Yeah, tools. Yeah. Okay, how, how I use it? Uh, yeah. Okay, how I use AI as a tool to build the community? What is that the, think? what do I think? Okay, I believe AI is just making everything easy. As a community lead, I find AI definitely easy for me with uh, community management because if I'm able to automate tasks, I know I can have emails sent at a certain period of time. I know I can easily go to, let's say, Gemini and draft a community plan for a whole year. It will definitely make work easy for me. And I believe we should all uh, make use of AI. Uh, we should make it part of our day-to-day -day lives because I believe we are not going anywhere without AI. Then also some community uh, communication tools like, um, you know the AI tools that you can use to join meetings and take recordings for you? So I feel like uh, those ones also make it easy because if someone wasn't able to attend a, a Zoom session and they joined with that AI tool, they can definitely always refer to the meeting and get whatever they missed out on. So I believe AI is a vital tool for, for not only communication, but even collaboration in the community. Yeah. Okay, uh, so may I get more questions than all the ses previous session add up, so <laughs> that's good. 我们用中文不太发问，但英文问了好多问题，比前面加起来都还多。大家继续，还有问题吗？Any more questions? Okay, then thank you.